Jalil, thank y'all so much for just coming together for the purpose of seeking the kingdom of God and bringing support together, having a collective effort. And our prayer is that we not only collect, but that we actually connect. Everybody say, Lord, make us one. That's what, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I pray that you all will be one just like I and the Father are one. Hallelujah. Y'all, let's go ahead and turn to Daniel chapter number eight. Hallelujah. Chapter number seven was so very powerful dealing with visions, visions and victory, visions to victory. Hallelujah. Victory through visions. Sometimes we have to receive victory spiritually, even though we didn't get a chance to walk in it naturally. It's important for us to grab the hope that we can receive by way of the spirit. We have to be able to know the hope that is promised to us. We have to know and believe that where we are is not all it's going to be. You know, we we all face discouraging times and discouraging moments and we feel like giving up we feel like throwing in the towel and y'all let's just be real we really do feel like giving up and letting go at times on various situations but it's, it's so powerful to know that in the midst of us choosing and feeling like letting go a lot of times i'm convinced to believe that when we go from a season of feeling like letting go, a season of feeling like giving up, a, a, season of, a season of feeling like we've been depressed, I believe that when we make it through that season, everybody say, I made it through the season. When you make it through the season, I really believe it's because there was intervention. I believe that we could have been in the midst of turning around to go back where we came from, and yet God sent intervention to stop us you know we could have been thinking about going back where we were and 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 I, i'm so grateful that god could have allowed us to go back we could have went back and started having a grand old time and getting deeper and deeper into bondage and and, and i'm not just gonna say bondage i'm gonna say fun because most people think that bondage is fun go back to having fun and giving up what you have giving up what you once held on to and I'm so grateful that intervention is able to show up because intervention reminds you, inter intervention restores you, intervention establishes you, intervention says no that's not you. I remember talking to a, a young lady uh, a couple of days ago and she was telling me she was in a place that she knows she shouldn't have been doing things she knows she shouldn't have been doing and, and, and it's like God sent somebody there to her to say why are you here? You shouldn't be here. You're not like everybody else and I really believe that God has a way of intervening y'all man y'all i don't know about y'all but today i'm thinking god for intervention i'm thinking god that sometimes there's times that god can give us a tough word sometimes god can give us tough instruction but even though my flesh don't like it my spirit is like i knew i needed that my spirit is like thank you so much because sometimes you don't need a little passive you know where you know you need to get better where you know you need to get better you know sometimes you need a strong word that's gonna snatch you out of the fire the bible says in the book of Jude, he says, snatching them out of the fire with fear, hating the garment that defiles the flesh. It's not the person that's just so caught up. It's what they got on that's leading them into destruction. Y'all, we got to get to a place that when we realize that, that we're headed to a direction that's taking us off purpose, it's because of something you need to take off that you got on. That's why the Bible says to put on the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. Sometimes when you're going through stuff, you got to be able to say, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord Jesus. It ain't what I wanted to be right now, but I thank you right now. I just give you praise. Everybody, I don't, I, I, you know, I wonder right now, how many of y'all could really believe that if you just take a moment right now, just begin to thank God right now. You might be going through some attacks with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, where you feel like all you see is stuff that you wish you had, but you need to know and be able to be reminded you need intervention to show you what you already have. It's not about what you wish you had. It's about what do you have at this moment. And we need intervention. 
sometimes our words can lead us to a place that we may not recuperate from. Sometimes our actions and the wind can blow us in a direction that we say we didn't even want to go. Didn't want to be like that. And man, God has a way of teaching us and growing us up to where we're not captivated by money anymore. We get to a place we're not captivated by relationships. We're not captivated whether or not you're not going to like me anymore. We're not captivated. You know, I'm not going to say we don't care. We still care, but we're not captivated by it anymore. We don't, we don't allow the, the fear of what somebody else going to say to make us disobey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I believe... All the things that we read in Daniel from chapter 1 all the way to chapter number 8, I think we get a chance to start seeing the fruit of commitment. And y'all, we've been talking about victory through visions, visions in victory. But what we're going to go into right now, going into chapter number 8, y'all, is visions and interventions. Visions and interventions. Because we all need interventions hallelujah we need intervening sometimes I can't get it right sometimes I need help sometimes I need you to show up sometimes I need you to put your hand on my shoulder and say no this ain't the way you do it sometimes I need you to to check me sometimes I need you to sweat me <laughs> sometimes I need you to handle me a certain way because if you don't I may not get it do let me tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all something real quick and we're going to start reading. Do you know that they got some teachers and some coaches on football teams, coaches for football, that literally make cursing a part of their vocabulary? Cursing. I'm talking about just blaspheming, just cussing you out. And want me to let you in on the secret. One of the reasons why they believe that it's successful, because they believe if they don't cuss you out, you ain't going to get it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They really think that I could tell you run the ball, but it's not the same if I don't say run the GD ball yeah, yeah, yeah. or run the MF ball. Right, right. They think that it puts something extra. And we need intervention, y'all. And if we, if we decide to say, wait a minute, but I'm not going that route. We got to really believe that intervention is going to show up. And it doesn't have to show up looking like the flesh, y'all. It don't have to show up looking like the world. It can show up and be something that God sent that's ready to blow our minds. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter number 8. And we're going to start at verse number one. And I'm going to ask Minister Gio, if you could, why don't you go ahead and catch that verse number one for me, man. Watch this. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel after the one that appeared to me at the first. Okay, praise the Lord. So now, Daniel had already said in chapter seven, he says, in the first year of Belshazzar. Chapter number eight, he's saying, in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar. So now we're starting to see that there was a series of things that was taking place in Daniel's life. Visions and dreams, things that was just coming to him. And he's saying right now, this was the third year. And a vision came to me after the other one came at first. Verse number two, watch this. Say, uh, Brother Wamba, why don't you go ahead and read verse number two, man? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. In my vision, I saw myself in the citadel of Fusilum in the province of Elam. Yeah, in the street. In the palace. I would be back there. Yes, I don't know what this word means. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me get uh, Sister Annie. Can you read that same verse, woman of God? Verse number two. Verse two. Yes, ma'am. And it says, And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shusham, 
in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulam. Yeah, you lie. Hallelujah. He says, I saw in a vision and it came to pass. When I saw that I was at Shushan, but look what he said, y'all. He was in a palace. Did y'all get that? He was in a palace. And he says, and the palace was in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision. And as I was by the river Ula. Y'all, when I think about this, I'm thinking about how people a lot of times will be in hotels and they're on the beach and they show you the skyline. They show you what kind of scenery that they have outside of their window. You know, you're like, man, that looks nice. Well, Daniel is saying, I was in the palace in Shushan, but then y'all know the place where you can see the river? He's saying, this is where I was. And y'all listen to this. One of the things I need us to really understand is, when we have visions, and when we understand that we need interventions, everybody says, sometimes I need intervention. Sometimes I need intervention. That, that's just another way of saying I need some help sometimes. Sometimes I want to believe that I'm strong enough. Sometimes I want to believe I got it. I want to believe I can handle it. But sometimes I need some intervention. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, so watch this, y'all. Never allow the location that you're at to hinder your vision or your assignment. Never allow your location to hinder your vision or your assignment. What does that mean? That means that sometimes you can be in a location where you got certain people with you. And God can give you a word about something that you're supposed to do. And because of your fear of losing the connection or the location and the affiliation of the location, some people will actually turn their back on God for the sake of where they are. Y'all understand? He says, I saw this vision and I was even in the palace. Y'all, sometimes what God shows us, we can't allow where we are to make us see or believe that we did not see what God showed us. If God showed it to us, we got to believe it. We've been through enough, y'all. And what God has revealed to us, we got to be able to accept the fact that if he revealed it to us, you know, I got to trust him in the midst of it. I got to trust God in the process. Right. Praise the Lord. Verse number three, watch this. Verse number three. Sister Judea, baby, can you read verse number three? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. First, my eyes and saw and behold, a ram standing on the bank of the canal. It had two horns, both horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Okay, so now he's talking about he just saw a ram. Yeah. He said a ram had two horns. That's not nothing unusual because all rams have two horns. But he says that one was higher than the other. And the other came up last. So that means that evidently this particular ram, instead of having horns on each side, the ram had a horn in the front and another one right behind the one in the front. Okay? So he's saying this is what I saw. Now watch this, y'all. Verse number four. A hey, uh, Kenan, can you read verse number four, man? Hallelujah. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and cyber and no beast could stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and magnified himself. Hallelujah. So now he's saying, wait a minute, not only did I see a ram, but this ram was showing off. This ram was showing that nothing could challenge him, nothing could defeat him. This ram was handling his business. Okay, let's keep going, y'all. Watch this. Verse number five. Verse number five, Elijah, are you in a position where you can read, man? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Read verse as number five. I, as I was thinking about this, suddenly a boat with a prominent horn between its eyes came from the west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. Oh, boy. Y'all see, y'all hear that? <laughs> he said, I noticed 
that a goat came out toward the ram. But this particular goat had a horn coming from between his eyes. Y'all see that? A notable horn coming up between his eyes and it said it came toward the ram, but it was coming toward the ram without touching the ground. That means, that means the goat was floating, y'all, like it was flying. This is a vision, y'all, watch this. Verse number six. Verse number six. Minister, why don't you go ahead and read verse number six, man, read it loud. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel 8, six. It came toward the two-horned ram I had seen standing beside the canal and charged at it in great rage. Great rage. All of a sudden, you got two animals right now, and now there's about to be a fight. Everybody said there's about to be a fight. There's about to be a fight. Be a fight. <laughs> Watch this, y'all. Verse number seven. Minister G, I want you to go ahead and read verse seven. In my vision, I saw him come close to the ram, Medo Persia, and he was moved with anger against him, and he, Alexander the Great, struck the ram and broke his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but the goat, the goat threw him to the ground and trampled on him. And there was no one who could rescue the ram from his power. Oh my God! I don't know if y'all how much y'all pay attention, but usually rams are bigger than goats. Rams are serious, y'all. And this scripture says that the goat came, took care of the ram. And said it looked like the goat was handling his business like no one could ever come and challenge him. Yeah. Okay. Verse number eight. Watch this. I'm going to catch this one. Therefore the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. Uh oh, something happened with his authority, y'all. Right. And for it came up and f and for it came up four notable ones. So when it broke, four more horns came out toward the four winds of heaven. Watch this. Verse number nine. I'm going to ask Jalil, read it loud for me, baby. Then a little horn grew from one of those four horns. It grew and became very big. And the horn grew toward the southeast, toward the beautiful one. Hallelujah. And out of them, came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Yeah. Verse number 10. Let me get Claude. Can you read verse number 10, man? They grew great even to the host of heaven and he cast down some of the host under the the ground and stamped upon them. Hallelujah. It became so great and it started stamping out things. Y'all, I want y'all to understand that even where we live right now in our society, there is spirits that's operating in our world right now that's trying to stamp the gospel out. It's trying to stop believers from taking a stand. It's trying to stop us from believing in righteousness. It's trying to stop us from doing those things that's pleasing to God. And it's not just trying to just slow it down. It's trying to stop it totally. Totally. Verse number 11. Minister Gio, read this one. Yes, this horn magnified itself, even matching itself against the prince of the host of heaven. And from him, the continual burnt offering was taken away and the place of God's sanctuary was cast down and profaned. Hallelujah. Y'all do know that back in biblical times, y'all, that whenever there was sin that was committed, they actually had to bring forth sacrifices. Yeah. They would bring forth rams, pigeons, turtle doves. They would bring forth offerings. They would bring forth grain offerings, uh, corn offerings, wheat offerings. And what started happening was back then, y'all, the, the spirit of this world began to attack the people of God in such a way to where they started stopping the sacrifice. It started interrupting. It's almost like people who've been going to church ritualistically, and I'm saying ritualistically, going religiously, and then they can go through something, and if they're not connected spiritually, but if they're just doing it out of a ritual, it doesn't take too much to interrupt your connection. 
It doesn't take too much to stop your faithfulness. It doesn't take too much to actually hinder as a stumbling block. Because we got to check our connections, y'all. Praise the Lord. And what's happening, y'all, in the midst of this, we have to see and recognize that when God gives you vision, it's so important for us to begin to wonder and say, God, how is this going to happen? Okay, I see the vision. Where is the provision? I see what you're telling me you're going to do, Lord God. Where is the intervention? How is this going to happen? Y'all, I got times that I go through things that God has shown me. And I'm not going to lie to you. There's times I'm like, where is the help going to come from? How is this going to keep going? How can this happen? You know, people get tired, y'all. People get weary. And they wonder, what is going on? And we all come to a place where we need intervention. And the scripture says, y'all, that this, this particular animal began to take over coming against the other animal. And then it begins to get bold and cocky. Like I'm just, I'm so good and I got this. Verse number nine, watch this. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, toward the pleasant land. Verse number 10, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Y'all, this sounds even like, like Satan's fall. And it sounds like even those fallen angels that fell because of what happened. Y'all, this is basically letting us know that there was a battle. That Y'all, Daniel is, show, is being revealed something to him that took place in the heavens. Now watch this, y'all. Verse number 11. Yet he magnified himself. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Satan. He's talking about the God of this world. Even to the prince of the host. Almost like challenging Christ, which is why he's called the anti-Christ. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Verse number 12. And the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, meaning constant sin. And it cast down the troop to the ground and it practiced and prospered. It practiced and prospered. It kept going. Practiced and prospered. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's be honest. It does appear that sin sometimes looks like it's winning. Come on, just tell the truth. Sometimes it looked like the temptations that we wish we could have. It looked like everybody else having the fun. And when we get to a place where we like it, man, it looked like, man, I know the words say not to do it. But man, they, why it look like they get to have all the fun? It's saying that they practiced it and they prospered. When it's talking, this particular prosper is not talking about a heavenly prosper. It's talking about a growth. It's talking about a movement that is getting other people to join in. It's getting other people to say, yeah, I'm going to do that too. Yeah, I'm going to do that. You doing it? I'm going to do it too. You want to do it? I'm doing it too. And it's prospering, y'all. Then all of a sudden, y'all, here comes the intervention. Then all of a sudden, Daniel says, verse number 13. Sister Judea, go ahead and read that one, baby. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one who spoke, For how long is the vision concerning the regular burnt offering, the transgression that makes desolate, and the giving over the sanctuary and hopes to be trampled underfoot? Hallelujah. He says, I heard a holy one talking to another holy one. Remember Jesus himself came out and said that nobody knows the day and the hour when the Son of Man is going to return. Y'all, they got things that they talk about even in heaven that they don't know. And Daniel is saying, I overheard two heavenly beings communicating one to another. Listen to this, y'all. He said, I heard one saint speaking and I heard another saint 
speak unto a certain saint which spake. And that saint said, how long is this going to take place? How long is it going to happen concerning the daily sacrifice that these things are going to continue to happen? And the transgression of the desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot to make it look like the kingdom is, is not, it's not progressing. It, it, it seems like the kingdom work is slowing down. It seems like the enemy is actually winning. Verse number 14, and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Minister Gio, read 13 and 14 out of yours. Then I heard a, a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one that spoke, for how long is the vision concerning the continual offering, the transgression that makes desolate in giving over of both the sanctuary and the host of the people to be trampled underfoot. And he said to him, to, and he said to him and to me, for 2300, six years, three months, evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed and restored. Hallelujah. Y'all see that? This is talking about a season, y'all. Sometimes we go through things where in our lives, the holy place. Sometimes y'all, we get contaminated. Sometimes we go through things that we don't realize that it made us dirty, hallelujah. You go through things and he says, it's desolate, like what's gotta happen? He says, well after this time, the sanctuary is going to be cleansed. Y'all, when I think about things that I've gotten caught up into, and even, even right now, I think about, because y'all know, they got some things that we know that's obvious sin, but then they got other things we don't even know. Sometimes we don't even know if we broke a holy law. Sometimes we don't even know if we went against the will of God. But I like the fact that the scripture says that they may not know everything, but they knew that it was going to be a certain time that all of a sudden the sanctuary would be cleansed. Everybody say, Lord, cleanse my sanctuary. Lord, cleanse my sanctuary. Because our bodies, y'all, are temples of the Holy Ghost. Father, cleanse me right now, Lord Jesus. We don't know how much more we got to go through, but cleanse us right now, Lord God. Cleanse us. Hallelujah. He says, it's going to be cleansed, but y'all watch this intervention. Praise the Lord. Elijah, man, why don't you go ahead and read verse number 15. Watch this, y'all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While I, Dana, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, but before me stood one who looked like a man. He says, I was trying to understand this vision, trying to use all my effort, all my intelligence. All of a sudden, I looked up, and it was somebody standing in front of me and looked like a man. Watch this, y'all. Verse number 16. Amani, are you there, Amani? Is Amani over there with y'all, Claude? Hallelujah. Yeah, Amani. Amani, go ahead and read verse 16. And I heard a voice from the United Party. He to this man in the of the Look what it says, y'all. It says, I heard a man's voice, which called and said, Gabriel. Y'all, it was a, a person, an angel that spoke and called out another angel's name. And his name was Gabriel. And he said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Y'all, sometimes we... We don't understand. Sometimes we don't get it. And sometimes there's got to be intervention that y'all, you know, y'all know, y'all know the song Amazing Grace. <laughs> you know, we was blind. Something had to intervene to open my eyes. Hallelujah. Right now, he said, Gabriel, make him to know what I'm talking about. Verse number 17, so he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid. Y'all see this? 
and fell upon my face. And he said unto me, Understand, son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Like what I'm showing you is not to take place right at this moment. I'm showing you something that's going to be generations after you, but it's going to be recorded. Y'all, I need y'all to understand, when God said that he made us in his image, there's certain things that he's trying to download into us, not only to save your son or your daughter, but to save generations. Y'all, I can't express to us enough that we are not ordinary. You are not just some Joe walking the street. There is a level of glory on the inside of you. And God wants to use you. God wants to reveal some things to you that you may not understand right now. But the scripture says, make him to know it. Open his eyes. Cause him to see what he couldn't see. Cause him to hear what he couldn't hear. Cause him to understand what he couldn't comprehend. Hallelujah. Verse number 18. Now as he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. And all he did was touch me. Y'all see that? And when he touched me, it stood me upright. Oh my God. And he said, behold, Verse number 19, I will make you know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. He's revealing these things to us. Praise the Lord. Verse number 20, the ram which thou saw it having two horns are the two kings of Mede, the Medes and the Persians. Verse 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia or Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand out of the nation, but not in his power. Verse 23. And in the latter time of the kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, the king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Y'all listen to this. Y'all know we talk about the separation of church and state. You won't find a separation of church and state in the scriptures because God gives instructions concerning kingdoms. God gives instructions concerning government. There is nothing that God has, y'all, that he would cause us to walk blind to what's going on. That's why when it comes down to politics and political things, y'all, it takes a spiritual eye to see what's going on. You can't recognize it naturally. You can't grasp this in the flesh. It's spiritually discerned. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says in a latter time, of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full, the, cure, the king of fierce countenance and understanding of dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Hallelujah. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Y'all, they're talking about saints of God. They're going to try to get rid of the people who's trying to do the right thing. Yo, this ain't the time for us to act like we don't know who we are. This ain't the time. To, that's why the scripture says don't even love the world. Don't even love the things of this world. Because if you do, you can find yourself compromising. Not realizing that you were sent here for a purpose. Daniel said he was in a palace. But yet, while he's in the palace, guess what, y'all? Because if you begin to idolize certain people, or if you idolize certain places, if you idolize certain things, it's almost like you can cut off the switch from hearing from God. You can get to a place where God, I, I got that job now, so I don't need you anymore. It doesn't matter. I got that, I got that car now. It doesn't matter anymore. Hallelujah. Look what it says, y'all, verse number 25. And through his policy, also he shall cause 
craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. Y'all listen, he's talking about a man that's going to be elevated. And he's not talking about stuff that's going to make everybody mad. He's talking about stuff that's going to make people celebrate like, yeah, yeah, that's what we need. Can y'all imagine somebody being elevated in government and everything they say, everybody's like, yeah, everybody. The scripture says that they're going to love this man. He, he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without a hand. Y'all see that? That means that a word is going to be spoken to him and take his power. Hallelujah. Y'all, we just about done. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Like, like in other words, make sure you, like, make sure you write this down. Y'all, let's make sure that we don't forget to write stuff down. Y'all, there's things that... that what you wrote down, just imagine you could have a grandchild reading what you wrote. Just imagine y'all some y'all know how sometimes death, when people die, it makes it seem like people are more important when they're dead. Y'all know that? You know, when somebody alive, that's just a table. When somebody alive, that's just a glass. But when they dead. He sat at that table. When they did, he drunk from that glass. When they're alive, oh, that's just a watch. When he's dead, it was his watch. Y'all, they got things that there's revelation that's on the inside of us that's not for us. It's for somebody coming after us, y'all. And after he showed all this stuff to Daniel, Look what the word says in verse number 27. And I, Daniel, I fainted and got sick. Hallelujah. If this was in today's time, they probably would have said, Daniel got corona. He was sick. He says for certain days, his stomach started acting, start feeling funny, start feeling bad. He says, and afterwards I rose up. And look what it says. And after I got up, I went back to doing the king's business. Look, y'all, you got to remain focused on what you're doing. God can show you something, but we still got to be able to multitask. How do I take care of this, but then still be faithful over here? How do I go here, but still not forget this over here? He says, I kept the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision. He said, I even tried to talk to a couple of people about it. He says, but none understood it. I need to just, as we close out, y'all, I just want y'all to know there's some things that God is revealing to you that everybody's not going to understand. There's a greater purpose that God is calling each one of us to. Y'all don't take for granted that you're going to tell the first five people and they're going to be excited. Sometimes they won't be excited. Sometimes they may look at you sideways. All I'm saying, y'all, is we need intervention. Because if we don't get intervention, we'll give up in the middle of the struggle. We'll give up in the middle of the fight. The enemy is attacking all of our minds and we all thinking that maybe this is the last rodeo. Maybe this is it. Maybe I'm done. And then God will give, bring intervention to make you say, no, you're not done. You're not done. You're just getting started. God said, just hold on. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You got to keep on pressing. Y'all, we need help in the midst of everything that we're going through to keep us faithful, to keep us consistent. Praise the Lord. 
So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you.